Welcome back, pilots. We are in part two of our decision-making series, and we're going to do mid-tier light fighters today. And uh, we're going to take out the boomerang for reasons I'll explain here in a minute. But tier five is where you begin to, and mid-tiers is where you begin to see a difference in your light fighters in the game. Uh, I categorize the two different types um, slightly differently than other people do, just as a way of helping people understand you know, how they're best used. Most people would say this is where you begin to see a branch between energy fighters and maneuver fighters or turn and burn fighters. And uh, I agree with that. Obviously, that's definitely how the game is broken out. I tend to think of them more conveniently, though, as offensive light fighters and defensive light fighters. The light fighters that are energy fighters generally have good altitude and good speed characteristics. They have more mobility on the map, on the game map. And so they're, it's easier for them to get around and capture zones. And uh, turn and burn fighters or, or maneuver fighters have uh, not as good a speed characteristics, usually not as good a boost, speed, altitude, but they handle very, very well. They dogfight very, very well. And so as a result of that, they tend to be pretty good at, at you know, staying in one zone and doing well with it, right? They also tend to have lower altitude, which actually works fairly well. Um, if you're dealing especially with heavy fighters, staying very low to the ground and maneuver fighter is, is one option. You kind of force them to you know, deal with, as long as you keep your speed up, you force them to deal with the ground as sort of an additional barrier, right? It only works if you're going fast, though. So <laughs> if you're going very slow in your turn fighter, you really just make yourself a target. We're going to try not to do that today. And I've selected the boomerang for a couple of reasons. One, you can do these same decision-making processes with any defensive fighter at mid-tiers. We'll do a separate video on offensive fighters. Uh, but since this is where most people fight and play with Spitfire or Yak uh, lines at mid-tiers, those tend to be in the most comfortable. That's where I wanted to start at. Uh, but we are going to do this one. You can do it with Tech Tree Fighters. If you're looking to get a premium fighter at tier five, you know, mid-tier, cheap, easy in, you know, $10 purchase, you know, there's not a lot of choices, unfortunately. Most of these are locked behind specials or the, you know, the shop just rotating specials. Uh, but the Boomerang is one that is, you know, up all the time and is not too expensive and is a fairly decent aircraft and works for one of your lines. The reality is the Tomahawk may be better, but because it works for the Chinese tech tree and it's not really a tech tree there, it's just a bunch of premiums, it doesn't help you with skilling your pilots up. And so this is, uh, for me, uh, probably one to start with if you want to do that. Although obviously there are better options. The, uh, the M20, the Venom, and the Spitfire are all true maneuver fighters. Uh, the Spitfire 1A is probably the best out of all of these because um, it gives you the flexibility to go on the offense as well. And, of course, if you want to pay a little bit extra, there's the um, AM6, A6M3, the Zero, uh, Experimental Zero with the 30 millimeters. This one can be tricky, though. The 30 millimeters take a while to lock in, um, and so and it is a little more expensive as well. So this one's a good all-rounder, and uh, we'll see that. And it does have an advantage over some other turn fighters. Although it doesn't turn as well, its average time to turn is slightly smaller here. Um, it does have an advantage in that it, its optimal altitude, right? Its ability to get up higher is easier, and we're going to use that to our advantage today. But mostly we're going to talk about decision-making while defending a zone and kind of holding on defensively in a battle. And we'll do that as best we can. Now, I don't know what maps I'm going to get today, but we'll play a couple of battles and see what happens. And we'll start with that. So enough of the preamble and the rambling. Let's jump right into it and see what kind of uh, game and match and processes we get. All right, pilots, we have received uh, Archipelago Reconnaissance by Fire. So we've got two airstrips, mining plant and these garrisons. This is great for teaching and learning this because we have the mining plant here, which is a great place to defend with a defensive fighter like this guy. And of course, most importantly, we're looking, we have a bomber, excellent. We have an energy fighter uh, or light fighter that can be offensive in nature, the 109B, excellent. And we have 109E that's specialized even better. So we're gonna let them uh, do awesome things and we're gonna be against the Spitfire and I-17 Specialized. This is a very rare aircraft and a very good one, P-36 uh, and a Hurricane 2D. So this is gonna be an interesting battle, especially for us. I do not have this aircraft specialized, uh, but it is nonetheless um, you know, pretty powerful in terms of its ability to maneuver and especially if we can keep some altitude on these guys. We're gonna go ahead and head to the middle because I see we've got um, players headed here to the air base and we've got our bomber player up here and we want to support him. Now you can't fly above your optimal altitude 
And uh, that's not a bad idea, especially initially getting into a zone, have that altitude advantage. Gives you some options on how you deal with the enemy. I can now cover the bomber if I need to. I can dive down and take out an uh, attack aircraft. You know, there's a couple of different things we can do. Looks like the flak is on the bombers. They're already dropping, which is lovely. Uh, we can go ahead and take this bomber, or I see a player down here. We're going to see what the player ends up doing. If he's going to stay down low. We've got good firepower, by the way, which is why I'm not opposed to uh, taking these bombers out, and especially because it will delay the capture of the zone and let our bombers work. I think I do have a guy climbing. Nope. So we're already up on capture points. I'm just going to shave a little off this guy as he goes out of zone. Now, while I've been doing that, this guy is working my attack aircraft down low, it looks like. And it looks like the P-36C is gone. Uh, we're going to see if we can just cap this guy now that he's coming back. In the oh, okay, 109 E's on him. Let's go down and see what we can do about these guys down here. This is going to be interesting. We're going to see if we can bait them up. They're interested in our attack aircraft. We don't want to give up the advantage quite this easily, though. We want them out of energy. We want them drained when they come up, and we want to be full of energy. So we're going to use these 20 millimeters on the, this guy here to reach out and touch. That's one. We're just going to keep flying. This guy is also low on energy. If he wants to come after me, he's going to have to fight me for it and get the boost. Yep, he can't keep up. And so even though we're a maneuver fighter, look, I'm able to use that altitude to my advantage. 109E kicks in to help out as well, and that's the zone. A little pass on him. That first bomber we killed is up there, right? We got a bot heavy, it looks like he's on him. And we got some people coming in. Look at this whole zone back here. We got these four guys coming in over here. We want to get away from that. We don't want to be the tip of the spear in it. We want to hold this zone as long as possible so that it rolls over and gives us those points. Marmot is handling his business down there. We're going to gain altitude again. We're just going to get that altitude up, right? All right, now, the enemy has been strung out. Marmot has finished that guy. We got this Hurricane 2, and we got a um, Blenheim coming in. We're going to deal with the Blenheim first if we can. It's a heavy fighter, but not as good maybe as some other heavy fighters. All right, so we're going to deal with him first if we can. I'll keep an eye, head on a swivel. There's a lot of guys in this zone, right? And this is where maneuver fighters can be very helpful. It's a Spitfire here. That's a problem. And he's, we got a tail position on him. Let's switch to the better target, right? I'm going to go ahead and cook that. Pneumatic assist. We're hoping to get a crit. We're going to go in the vertical. I'm using that rudder control to stay above him. And again, just taking this fight as vertically as we can because he can probably outturn us. Okay, our wing is cooked, and we are cooked. We lost our wingmate. We're three to one here. We're going down, and we're gonna just have to deal with that, unfortunately. Uh, so this is, you know, one of the problems with offensive fighters. You can get overwhelmed, and you can see air superiority has happened. Um, and while so while this is the most comfortable class of fighter for people to play. It's one I strongly do not recommend for, for learning the game because all you'll learn is that you don't have any power over the greater battle, right? So we're going to go, uh, I think Marmot's over here capturing. we got some bots there. look like they're about to flip that. We'll come here just because we don't want to go into that zone alone. Um, we'll end up getting overwhelmed again, and the faster we can flip this, the better. You know, this match is already over at this point. This is one of the disappointing, most disappointing aspects of World War Planes is the superiority mechanic, which just ruins everybody's day. I'm going to kick the boost so I can get altitude and get speed and uh, get back over. Um, I mean, at this point, with the game over, my decision making is I need points. Uh, we're not going to get a win here. Um, so what do I do? And you can see Marmot probably is thinking the same thing. Yeah, he's going to take, take down some enemy planes over there. So there's not much I'm going to be able to do. I may not even get anywhere um, in time to have any uh, sort of influence on this. I do see the P-36 below me. We can't outturn him, so we're going to get our points here. Speed up a little, get that dive going. We're going to hold our fire until the last second. 
case he doesn't see us. Good. And we're just going to go straight up. And, of course, Marmot's going to steal the kill. Thanks, Marmot. You're a gem. <laughs> uh, the second worst thing about World of Warplanes is uh, fun pilots. Sarcasm is allowed in the game. Uh, definitely. Incidentally, when we get to energy fighters like this guy, we'll just let Bulldog have him. Game's over anyway. Oh, come on. Come on, Bulldog. You're going to do us a favor at the end there. What's wrong with you? All right. <laughs> Not enough firepower, I guess, in that I-17. So anyway, as I was saying, you will learn when we get to the offensive energy fighters that Marmot did not play the game well. Um, he is not a defensive fighter. He cannot maneuver well within that center zone. He will get overwhelmed because he'll lose his one greatest strength, which is his altitude and his energy, when he turns and goes low like that, right? And so energy fighters are at a great weakness on the ground trying to turn fight. Um, they've entered into a territory that's not good with people. Uh, not good against other fighters. They're at a disadvantage against energy fighters diving on them and are at a disadvantage against maneuver fighters that can outturn them. Um, and so you want to stay on the offensive with that, whereas an aircraft like this, you just stay on the defensive um, and try and keep those zones locked. So, all right. So not a great match altogether. Um, you know, rough, rough showing on our part. And uh, we had guys on their team who went out and captured zones. Two, three. Yeah. Uh, so that's five. Five total. We captured three, four, uh, five, six. These were some doubled up ones, though, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because he and I were on the mining plant, so that's really five. And he was part of the mining plant as well, so that's really four. So we captured four, and they captured five. So there you go. Again. 90% of the time, that's how it's going to work. All right, so we'll get into another one. Hopefully this one goes better. And our two lessons so far, decision-making-wise, keep uh, keep your, even if it's a maneuver turn fighter and you're on defense, stay high in the altitude, right? Um, because you can still use that as an advantage, especially one like this where your you know, optimal altitude is a little higher than other turn and burn aircraft. And, um, and kind of use that to your advantage. And secondly, if you are playing an offensive fighter, don't come to one zone and just squat on it or the match will be automatically a loss like we just saw so there you go let's see how match two goes all right so this one should be a little better this one's mining plants on the opposite sides with garrisons but the center zone that we're going to try and defend is the forward airstrip you notice last game we only got three kills that's because there are no defensive aircraft in that mining plant to help take it over right we had to get kills on the enemy team to help flip it. And then when you're just sitting there kind of waiting for people to come in, that's where you actually get most of your kills as a defensive fighter. But we didn't get a chance to do that, really. On our team, so we should have a higher kill count this time. Marmot is back. Yay. Uh, Marmot's going to squat on the airfield again, so this may be a problem for us. And uh, then an A5, which is going to go capture zones, and a Hurricane 2D, uh, which will probably, I don't know what he's going to try to do. It'll be interesting, but uh, we'll see. So this may be a good place to talk about another decision-making aspect. Even though I am a defensive fighter and I am best squatting on this zone and handling it, given what we know about our teammate from the last match, um, we know once he gets over here, he's probably not going to leave. And so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go capture this zone, and then I'm going to leave. Uh, I won't be as good at it, and he won't be as good at it, but it still gives us a better chance at winning than us both sitting here in one zone and getting out capped for the rest of the match. At least we have some ability to go on the offensive and take these caps. And that's really a good way to think about this you know, in terms of your sectors in the game. Um, and the way this works is capturing sectors is offensive action and holding on to sectors is defensive action. <clears throat> you can't win a match by being purely defensive. It's not going to happen, right? Um, if you want to win, you have to go capture things. And so that's best way to Decision making wise here, I'm going to fight the rear of the two planes first to get the points for him. This guy's outside the zone, but he's too dangerous to leave alone, so I'm going to have to take him out here. Uh, it looks like he's back in the zone, too. We're going to wait till we get in the zone as well. And 
turn capped off. All right, we got a low on the action. I'm gonna gain some altitude. We've got our wing back, thankfully. Okay, cut to this guy. You know, we got these 20s. We can reach out and touch. And we're just gonna fire some short bursts. We're gonna shave off some HP where we can. It's a bot. He's gonna come down eventually. Sneeze. All right, looks like now we're not going to get points for this guy if we're not inside the zone. And uh, while our airfield is full points right now, it's something we want to think about is where we kill people at. All right. All right, what are we doing here? Marmot is not in zone with us. We have a bunch of enemy aircraft on the other side, so we're going to see what we can do over there. We do need someone to kill that bomber. Help us take that mining plant. It's an even fight over here because of the bots, so I'm not afraid to charge in. We need to get our speed back up as much as we can, and fortunately, that's how quickly your luck can change. And this is also why, incidentally, um, you know, it's not always a great thing playing with... Um, Defensive fighters who just don't necessarily have right, the ability to control the pace and tempo of the battle. Probably should have stuck with him first, but I thought he was going to leave the zone, and unfortunately that allowed their uh, human pilot to come back after me. The good news is we're up hugely on points, and we do have one of the mining plants, and they do not have one yet. So, Marmot looks like he's trying to take the other mining plant. Yeah, which is awesome. That's a wonderful thing. He's doing great this battle. Uh, this is exactly what he needs to be doing in a light energy fighter. Staying on the offensive and um, kicking tail out there. And we are well suited for retaking this airfield. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. <clears throat> now you can see that three of their planes have left. They're staying on the offensive, especially the multi-role, the A5. Excellent choice by him to keep pushing the tempo on this. And we're going to come in here and see if we can defend. One of the advantages you have on attacking, by the way, is there are times you get 60 capture points. Right? So if I can get this guy down, he's just going to fly away, it looks like. So we're going to switch off because we don't want to get swarmed also by these guys. But I can get 40 capture points for each of these air defense aircraft, right? Hopefully that guy doesn't lock onto my tail. Yep, he does. All right. I got somebody on me somewhere. Or was that fan? I was fan of shells. Oh, there he is. Okay. So you can see I'm alone against five, but that's okay. Well, um, bots in particular, again, don't handle the vertical very well, so if you can heal over on them, you got a good shot of winning. And here's one more right here. I got these guys lined up behind me. I checked the mini-map. They're diving on me. And again, see they peel off because they, they don't, the ground scares them. We can get you know, the closer they can. They have programmed one that's on where how low they can go. But that forces them to break off and we can come over here and finish the zone. So as I was saying, if we attack enemy pilots, real, you know, actual aircraft uh, on the enemy roster, we get 60 points on the attack for shooting them down. And you can see you need 120 points to flip a zone up there at the top. The enemy only gets 40 points for shooting anyone down. So the weight of points is always on the side of the offensive players. Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind. That's why defensive uh, fighters don't have a lot of great control over a match and end up having to recapture zones. And it is specifically for that reason. Okay, we see the 183 coming in. We have better firepower than him. We're gonna cook him on the head on and he's down. Um, he has two four machine guns, two heavy, two light. We have two 20 millimeter cannons. And so those 20s can do damage and also crit. And that is something to think about in these turn battles. Oh, is that the A5? I have a feeling it is. No, it's a tornado again. Um, if you can get a crit on the enemy and knock a wing out or something, that makes it far easier to win a maneuver fight. 
See again, I just twisting up, twisting up when I make that turn. And bots have a hard time following that regimen, right? Here's the A5. Let's cook him a little. We're close to squall line. We're gonna have to break off here because of the other enemy bot, but that's okay. We kind of want to wait until squall line to finish him. I don't mind the bot respawning. I really don't want this F-190 respawning, so we're gonna wait and be cold-hearted. There's squall line. And he's out. Now we only have one human pilot to worry about, and he's in the hurricane somewhere around here. That might be him coming in there. Oh no, no, it's not for us. So through this whole time, because of the efforts of Marmot, who has done a fantastic job, um, they have not captured the other mining plant, right? It's been a constant battle over there, back and forth seesaw. And so we've maintained our mining plant, they have not. And that's why there's a massive disparity in points here. And also they're now down four fighters. We haven't lost any post squall line. They've lost four and they're about to lose five. So see me pull off there to make sure the head on doesn't happen again. I don't want to lose my HP, particularly post squall line. There's no way to get it back. This uh, airfield does not have a, it's not an air base. There's not a repair station on it. So let those twenties do most of the work here. We got plenty of time. They're not going to let the uh, ADA steal our kill, though. All right. So, thanks to Marmot's efforts, we have been able to win this plant, right? And now there's a massive furball over there. Um, I don't know if we have time to get over there before the uh, match ends, but we'll kick the booster and see what we can do. One option, it may be not to do pneumatic assist, but to do the repair of control surfaces. Um, some people prefer that. It helps if you're in a fight, you get critted to be able to continue to do well in it. And I get that from maneuver fighters because you don't really have much to fall back on. Um, that's sort of a personal preference thing, though, up to you what you prefer. If you want a pneumatic assist to use offensively or that repair surface is to use defensively. I will say, this guy's big gun, so we're going to roll out just using that roll key. And then I'm going to use that rudder key, come up and over, just like that, and avoid the attack. Let's talk about those uh, in just a moment. Um, great job, Marmot. See, see the difference when you play the roles that are assigned to your aircraft? You know, what a difference that can make in the match. It's tremendous, and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this decision-making series is when you make good decisions, it has a significant impact on your ability to win a match. And if you win a match, you get more credits, you get more XP, um, and you, you get more time, right? You didn't get, uh, we get, didn't get superiority. So we had a nice long match there that allowed us to kind of gain some XP. I'm also without premium right now. I let mine run out. I've got plenty of gold. Obviously, I could buy some more. But, you know, some people don't have premium accounts. I want to show them you can easily do well, right, um, without premium. It just takes longer. You're not going to lose cash um, in that process. Just, just give you a little outline of that here. Repairs. So this is a premium, obviously. And we won, obviously, but, uh, you know, I made 75,000, 74,000 silver there. Look at this one. It's a loss. I did not do well. Remember, I only shot down three aircraft, um, but I've got 7,000 in costs, which means I made 34,000 silver. So you're going to make plenty of silver um, if you have one or two premiums that you can play, even if you do poorly in them, um, you're going to get there. The regular aircraft, there's a bonus for these, right? If this had not been um, a premium, I would have had... I don't remember what the multiplier is anymore. I have to look at that. But um, anyway, it, it would have been a little bit less, obviously. So let's see. What was the details on this one? Real quick. It's sidetracked here. 41. I want to say it's, is it 20% that premiums get? I don't remember. Anyway. So um, <clears throat> again, on this one. We had an offensive fighter doing offensive things and a defensive fighter doing defensive things, and it ended up being great, right? Um, we were able to do a lot of damage, take a lot of aircraft down, control the pace of the battle, um, and just really put it in. And you can see here by our, our chevrons, right? We did what we were supposed to do, um, which is fantastic. This is exactly what you want out of your pilots um, and out of your game um, over here. So Marmot captured three sectors, right? Garrison's mining plant. Awesome. And then I did these two captured and then recaptured. So we split up, we divided and conquered. We had five between the two of us over here. Pepe got one mining plant at the end of the game, mind you. That was the very end of the game. 
And then we had Svut, who was over here, and he captured two garrisons and the airstrip, which he took from me. So they had a grand total of four. We had five, but one of those was the very end of the game, right? So, all right. So uh, again, this is what, when you make good decisions, you play the aircraft the way it's meant to be played. Awesome things happen, right? And again, three chevrons, three chevrons. The game is telling you how it wants to be played with these, right? For the most part, there's some exceptions to that, but for the most part, look here, team score, right? We got three, and she destroyed a lot of aerial targets, got a lot of capture points, didn't defend at all, which is actually good. This is a little misleading, I think, on this one. But yeah, chevrons are normally a good, good way of looking at that. Uh, I think one of his was at the end of the, yeah, his was one at the end as well. So a lot of capture points came from that also. But generally speaking, you'll do better with your chevrons if you stick to uh, what your plane is designed to do and you'll have a better match and you will win more games. So uh, we were lucky to get two with that center zone that really, really helped with it. Uh, what do you think? One more match? Sure, why not? Let's do it and we'll talk about consumables and pilot skills as we go. All right, third match, Five, uh, three. Now oh, the bots are talking to me, look at that. Three garrisons, two air bases. We're gonna spawn here, we're gonna wanna take this. And uh, we may actually slide over here. Um, we'll see. So somebody on the other team has given us a salute. We'll give a salute back. And uh, this is good, we're facing off of it. a very good defensive fighter, right? I mentioned that already. And a specialized ground attacker. We have a specialized energy fighter offensive fighter and then mine so let's take this zone then we'll look and see our decision making process whether it goes center or these two is probably going to be based on what Jackson does up there um, and how he decides to deploy alright he's on him I'm going to go this way again we got these nice 20s we're going to reach out and touch at a longer range with some short bursts All right, zone is ours. Where are we going? Jackson just flipped and went right, if you're watching the mini-map. Looks like he's gonna head that way, so we're gonna head this way, maybe. Looks like he's going mid, so we wanna capture at least one of these airfields. We've already got two bots almost on top of that airfield, so we're gonna come over here. Hope our bots get the drop on this one, and we, or that one, and we get this one, and we'll let Jackson deal with the middle. He is in a prime position. If the zero goes to the middle with that energy fighter, altitude fighter, he has a good chance of winning that match, um, and that's an, I'll take that bet, right? Um, and then that would be great, because we have four zones to one, but we don't know. You know, that zero may come over here, may go to the other air base. We just don't have a handle on that yet. So we're still waiting for more information, which is often the case when you're trying to make good decisions and need good information. Got a bot, I'm gonna avoid not taking the head on. Once he gets to around 600 meters, I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna shark him from beneath. And again, just let these 20s work. You can see we're way up over our optimal altitude, that's okay. I'm not too worried about his tail gunner. He's on fire, he's still in the zone, by the way. I just glanced at the mini map. He's turning, he's coming back into the zone. I've got enemies to worry about behind me as well. He's out of the zone. We're gonna go ahead and finish him. No, he's, he's just, we're going to let that go. We're going to worry about these guys. All right. We can clear the Ju-87 at our leisure, and we can undo the work that he is doing by killing the other planes that are here. Again, I'm going to lose that rudder. Unfortunately, because of the Ju-87 working the ground, they've been able to take this zone. Probably spent too much time trying to get this heavy, which has now come back and damaged me. I should have let him go earlier. But now our job is to recapture this airfield and to make sure that Simon doesn't get it. Ah, Jackson's over here. All right, that's okay. Our bots have almost got that over there. All right, 2v2. Jackson is dove on that guy. I got to worry about. He's on the defensive. He came on my guy. I got on him, and that's a win for us. They're going to reset probably here. We're gonna try and flip this airfield before they reset because I don't want to have to deal with him and the bots at the same time, right? In terms of um, trying to recapture this. All right, 40 points and we got it back. If we can kill this guy, we'll get the airfield back. And that's that's our goal. All right, go 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 go! Speed 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 speed. Okay, I got enemy on my tail. E36. I'm 
unfortunately, we are not going to take this in time, I don't think. Just saw the dot there, which means that old just redid it. So we're going to see if he knows rudder warfare. We're going to again take him up using that rudder. I've got the rudder slate to the Q and E keys. Unfortunately, it's 3v1 again, and so we're going to have to do this. One thing I do have is that altitude control, right? So I can potentially stall him out, assuming that the bots don't kill me. He's almost stalled out here. We're going to reverse directions, and we're going to flip over on him. See how he stalled out underneath me? Now I have to, and I've got these cannons. All right, we set him on fire. We're going to go right back up again. We want to keep this a vertical fight. It's much harder for him to do that than it is for me to do that. Uh, and unfortunately, between the two, he got me. So while we've been trying to take this airfield, hopefully Jackson has been elsewhere trying to get another zone, uh, hopefully in the center, uh, because that would mean the difference for us between winning and losing here. And he's attacking, but it's outside and on the other zone. Uh, we have two choices here about where we spawn. We're going to spawn here. Hopefully we can flip the tide of battle. Uh, we do not want to defend this place. This is absolutely, you know, the wrong thing to do right now. Even though we're in a defensive fighter, and this is part of the decision making. Uh, yes, yeah, should have been there to begin with, my man. Uh, part of the decision making is we want to always be capping. So, you know, a defensive fighter, when we're losing like this, we absolutely want to take the fight to the enemy, even though we're not as good at it, um, because it could mean the difference between us winning this game and losing this game, right? There's plenty of guys behind me to finish that guy. I'll take the assist rather than the kill if it means we get a win. And we're going to push on. Jackson unfortunately stole that kill from me, which is, you know, again, not helpful. That's not something that really benefits you or your teammates. Um, working opposite ends, you know, that's, that's the way to do this. All right, I was able to get him in one pass uh, because we had another guy that was working on him. We could go to the airfield. Uh, we could stay here and defend, but we are down in points. Um, so again, even though it's not our bread and butter, we're gonna leave, we're gonna string this guy with us because that just means 60 points we can get in this zone if he comes with us, right? I'm not opposed to that. Unfortunately, the boomerang caps out at 500. I just got maneuver-based equipment on this, and we said we'd talk about maneuver equipment. So that, that repair of control surfaces is great if you get your rudder or tail shot out. Um, if you get a wing shot out, there's really not much difference between repairing the control surface and kicking the pneumatic boost. So really, it's a question of if you're worried about the tail getting shot out or not, right? That's the question mark. Um, and it's really, again, it's personal preference. I think I, you know either one is fine, probably. Uh, this plane is very good against fire, has good fire resistance, so I've opted for the uh, first aid kit so I can keep these 20s up and rolling as much as possible so I can do things like that. And old soldier just got Jackson, unfortunately. Thankfully, before squall line. Uh, but we've been able to take this zone, which is awesome. We're up three zones to two. We only have a handful of points. Squall line's about to drop. We want to stay alive for this, but look at all the enemy aircraft that are. Yep. Boom. So one one down already for squall line. That's awesome. We need to get that bomber down. That'll hurt their ability to cap. We need to get the ground attacker down there. I'm gonna get this I-16. Okay, we don't want to. We don't want to take that. He's good. He's cooked anyway. Let's put the other player out. Ground attack fighters, like defensive fighters, can sometimes find themselves in helpless positions, right? There's not much uh, that Simon can do against us in our efforts here, especially as a, a bomb, uh, ground attacker without bombs, right? So I see I've got enemies behind me, and I've got one of them is Jackson. Oh. So we're going to get some help. We're going to get to this airfield. Get our boost. He's using his boost. There's no way he would be gaining on me otherwise. And unfortunately, it looks like he's got me locked. So, I, Oh, there we go. Got a little bit of HP. We're going to drag him up. 
We're going to get him engaged with those other five aircraft, and we're going to dive on him, right? We're just going to be in the midst of the pack. He's got now it's a reverse from where it was before. He's got to deal with what I had to deal with when I was over his airfield. And that'll be the end of him. All right, we're still up on zones, but not not uh, very well. So um, we're going to, even though, again, we're a defensive fighter, we could stay here and finish that. Um, we gotta, we got to get over here and flip another zone just to be safe, just to make sure, right? Because we're very close to losing that one. All right. For, they've only got three aircraft left. So another option might be, right, do we... Okay, there we go. Another option might be do we hunt them down, but we are we don't have necessarily the altitude to go track down those two bombers. We'll try just because it's a good way to play defensively right now. Um, but I don't know that you know that's necessarily, there, there's no good decisions to make right here. We can go back and kill the last guy at the airfield um, or we can try after these bots. But uh, altitude, we can reach out and touch with those 20s maybe. I'm only doing this because uh, there's no other enemy aircraft around. Otherwise, I'd put myself in a really vulnerable position right there. All right, with these bots out and only uh, you know, maybe one enemy aircraft left after this, we should be in a position where even though we're three zones to two, we don't necessarily need to capture anymore. Um, you know, we'll feel pretty good about being safe where we're at. And so we'll just try and go after this guy. Yep, there's 800 and the match. So that's uh, when you have to play situationally, right, to where the game is at. Um, sometimes even as a defensive fighter, you need to go on the offensive. Being a defensive fighter doesn't always mean squatting on one zone, right? Um, there are times you have to get off that zone and make things happen if you want the victory. And in this case, because it was garrisons and airfields, there are air defense aircraft there. I have an easier time flipping those places and making it happen. In previous match, when there's mining plants, it's hard to do that, right? Um, am I better served by staying at the airfield? But in this case, small map, you know, zones I can flip. I'm going to take that, right? I'm going to, I'm going to push that tempo a little bit, take the fight to the enemy. And I'm going to be keeping an eye on the timer at the top, the capture, uh, the, excuse me, the points at the top. I don't even know what to call those anymore. Match points. I don't think I've ever known what to call those capture points or what you use in the zone, but you know, the actual, um, points towards winning the match at the top and, and keeping an eye on the zones and where we're at with that. Because even as a defensive fighter, sometimes you're pushed to go on the offensive. It's sort of this way, by the way, with introverts and extroverts. If you want to think of it this way in life, you're an introvert. doesn't mean you stay home every Friday night and watch a movie. Sometimes you still got to get out and hang out with people, right? Um, and vice versa as well. So there you go. All right. Jackson says, good game. Good game to you, Jackson. Good game. Well played. Uh, he did an excellent job hammering those zones and keeping life going. Uh, I think he, he did steal one kill from me, but that's okay. Uh, a lot of times in the heat of battle, you don't see these things unfolding, right? And you're just doing your best to get things going, especially in a tight match like that. But look, Jackson did fantastic. Look at this, offensive fighter, captured four zones, right? Just put pedal to the metal. And um, did he get a wing legend out of that? I mean, uh, an ace out of that? She got an ace out of that, right? Yeah, ace. So fantastic match by him. All right, and same thing. Even though I'm a defensive fighter, right? I'm pushing tempo as well. I'm getting out there, getting those capture points. Um, and again, we have the same overlapping, right? Here's the difference between offensive and defensive fighters, really. And this is a funny thing, right? This is, as you can see, where the match turned when he stopped to defend. But when we've got uh, defensive fighters, maneuver, turn, and burn fighters, you're kind of more on these two like this end of the spectrum, these two dials. And when you're offensive fighter, these are the two dials, right? Um, and so that's kind of where the difference, you can think about another way to think about the difference between them. So we did great. We pushed the tempo on them. Um, and they also did pretty good in their matches as well, right? Um, Soldier and Simon both capturing zones. You can see here you got four, Simon got two. Uh, Soldier got two, Simon got four. They played well. So well-played match all around. It was a fun match. There was no superiority. It went back and forth. And we were forced to make some good decisions in it. So excellent match. I'm glad we went for one more. Um, you know, what a great thing. So there you go. One last thing to talk about before I let you go, and that is pilot skills. 
um, particularly early on because maneuver fighting is what happens, and especially in period one. We'll talk about that when we get to period one decision making. But I would recommend for your pilots that you go ahead and jump on aerobatics expert and aerodynamics expert early. Um, these will get you maneuverability by 2% in all axes. That's good. Um, this one's better, so I would start with aerodynamics expert. You're going to increase the positive effect of mounted air equipment on aircraft by for maneuverability and speed both. So this is your first two points, I would say, right here. Um, and then I would uh, spread out to this one, even more maneuverability in all axes. That means yaw and pitch as well. That's great. And then, uh, then I would move over to marksman, get yourself a little bit more accuracy um, if you're doing a light fighter. You could also choose engine thrust, um, just depending on whether or not you're, if your plane already has good guns, but a weaker engine, maybe here, and then maybe you flip and go here. So that would be my recommendation. I took out one of my lower skill pilots here so that you could see. I think these six points is a core building block for, for most of the line. Um, and then from here, you get into other things. But again, depending on the line, you may want to do some engine stuff as well. But this is where I would start is with these three skills. My personal preference, others would tell you otherwise. On this aircraft, because it's not as good, it has a little bit of, uh, um, a little bit has eight boost instead of six. Most maneuver aircraft have six. So this one's a little bit of a hybrid, has a little better altitude, a little better boost. So I went with all maneuver equipment here. Just put me close to the maneuverability of things like that zero or the X series. And of course, a gun sight. Uh, to kind of get down the accuracy of these uh, guns a little bit. And again, as we said, if you want to switch this to emergency control system, great, uh, restores your controllability of wings and tail. Pneumatic control assist um, does a good job increasing maneuverability in all axes. But I have found it does not, if your tail is shot off and you use this, it doesn't help a whole lot. Um, and so that's the one thing that kind of separates these is whether or not you lose this. So there you go. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, you can do this with other maneuver aircraft, these decision-making trees, and you may need to come out of that comfortable center zone and go take some stuff. We want to be looking at the map, considering things and going for that win. Uh, but if you do want kind of a nice mid-tier maneuver fighter, uh, the Zero, obviously, or the Boomerang, I think, are both always on sale. And so easy to grab a hold of one of those and take it. Um, I would not do, where is it at? Unless you just want a Russian trainer, there are better Russian premiums than this guy. This one is technically also a maneuver fighter, uh, but um, much less altitude, right, to deal with. Um, and it doesn't have comparable armament to kind of make it out, right? It doesn't have the, the 20 millimeters on it. Um, its survivability is decent, um, but it's just, you know, overall, um, if you're going to pick one up, I mean, if you're tooling the Russian line, you want to go for it, go for it. It's not bad. Um, but if you just want to learn this kind of maneuver warfare, um, I would say the Zero is actually probably your best pick. But it's $2 more, and you're going to have to get used to the guns. Um, but if you want a good all-rounder, you know, has some flexibility, the Boomerang's not a bad choice. I believe the Boomerang also drops from the um, unique crates that you get every week, if I remember right. So this might be one you have already lying in the hangar, which is the other reason I picked it, because um, this might be one, a good one to learn on. So there you go. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you have comments, drop those in the comments. Um, if, you have, if you think I've screwed something up somewhere, please, by all means, let me know down below. Hope you're enjoying the game and the weekend missions, and I will catch you on the next of the decision-making series. We'll do mid-tier heavy fighters next.